In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicast. To the Voondacast, the official podcast of Voondablog.com, the home of whatever, the podcast that hires alias investigations to take pictures of when our podcast cheats on itself and becomes another podcast podcast known as the BTILC podcast. We got pictures. Jessica Jones can prove it. So ashamed. So ashamed. I am your host, Steven. And I'm Danielle. And we are the sounds of a playing dog. In the form of Xena in the background, if you can hear that. Um, They're going to get so sick of us talking about the dog. The dog's the, the third. She's she's like the, the... I guess if Kevin Smith can have his dogs like barking in Yapping, the yeah. Yeah, yapping. Right? Shucky's yapping. Like, at least she's like semi-quiet most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. It's kind of funny, though, because when I listen to the podcast back... And I'm editing it, and I he- she hears her squeaking toy in the background. She barks. She barks at it, and she's like, where's that toy? I want to get it. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not in the computer. Don't eat the computer. Our dog is a toddler. It's very serious. She will, sometimes to make her go to sleep, I'll just lay in bed, and I'll slowly close my eyes as she sits in bed with me, and it totally works. It'll put her to sleep. She's a baby. She's a two-year-old child. That's some, um, uh, yeah, today, actually, as we were on our... This this podcast is going to be the part one of our Jessica Jones journey. You're going to hear us after uh, six episodes of Jessica Jones talking about where we are, thinking about the series and where it's going. But as we were watching the series, we had this awesome moment with the dog where I totally just uh, kill-graved the dog. Yes. And had her under my control. She was, like, whining by the she door. She being really... She has this bad habit of whining by the door, not necessarily because she has to pee... Sometimes she just wants to be out, causing trouble, getting out, and we just want her to chill. And uh, most of the time we try to make her come up on the bed, and she just ignores us completely. But for some reason, Stephen stood, sat up, looked at her, said, Zena, up. And she got on this bed, took, spun in a circle, and took a fucking three-hour nap. Yes. It was pretty spectacular. And I was just like, what did you do? It was, it was like a full progression. It was like, Zena, yeah. up, sit. Down. down, yeah, and then she fell asleep. It was amazing. It was pretty powerful. I wish he could do that every time. I know. If only I had the power. I felt like a Jedi. I felt yeah. like Obi Wan Kenobi. God bless our dog. I can't wait until she's an adult, though. Puppyhood is is wearing me thin. Puppyhood is thin. It's adorable. And the fastest very... way to get through puppyhood is by tweeting us at Vundablog <laughs> and at Vundacast. Uh, also, send us an email Vundablog at gmail dot com. If you're listening to us on the radioactive underground radiate uh tweet us let us know at vundablog or at vundacast i think their website's radiate.fm correct that is correct know. our okay. website we are in unison now we are one uh-huh. oh. all right let's get to the jessica jones so now us talking about jessica jones take it steven of the past um so we are a uh, thank you for the intro future or steven and danielle or should i say past steven and danielle i never know how to do these things or time travel wise um i you already introduced us future steven right okay let me start again thank you for that intro steven and i'm steven with danielle and we are halfway through marvel's jessica jones just about we just finished episode six and it is a very interesting show, to oh, say the least. Oh, Steven's gonna do it. Do it. Steven's already diving into the middle. Yeah, um, I, I'll. We'll do the intro later. 
So we're just going to do like a little update so we can just throw this in and then we can throw in another one once we've completed the entire series at the end of the podcast for people who want the spoilers. So this is like midway. If you haven't made it to episode six, guess what? Spoilers, spoilers. These are the spoilers. Spoilers! For Jessica Jones. We were as excited as everyone else to watch Jessica Jones been anticipating this for a while, November 20th, November 20th, I was like, two things, exciting things are happening, The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 comes out, which I also saw, and Jessica Jones comes out, so I was waiting for this, so, it's kind of, this, I think this weekend was kind of the start of the fall movies, because we got Hunger Games, No, really, it comedy. started, when it did started it start with Spectre? With Spectre. But Spectre was the only one, it was like the Lone Ranger. Also, now it's like when, it, like, they're all like, you chiming what I'm saying? in like, to take like our dollar. Spectre kind of broke kind of broke, broke the, the ice. ice. He was like, oh, oh, guys, exciting things are happening, fall movies. But this weekend was Jessica Jones, The Night Before, starring Seth Rogen, JGL, and Anthony Mackie, um, Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. Um, I think a big movie came out with Julia Roberts. It's like an indie movie, but it's a Julia Roberts movie. It's always, you know, she's still bringing in the, the audiences. I, I mean, that didn't hit my know, radar at all. Apparently it's not doing great. It didn't get very good reviews, but I still want to see it. called Secrets in Their Eyes. Uh, it has Nicole Kidman in it. It has a bunch of pretty big deals in it. But well, that Maybe they're not exciting. as big of a deal as they used to be, I guess. The secret is in the movie. You gotta check it out. <laughs> in their eyes. <laughs> in their movie. eyes. With anyway, your eyes. So, you know, it was a pretty big weekend for movies and TV, and so we decided to definitely start watching Jessica Jones, watch the first episode. On, we're on episode now, six. We ended. We just ended. Now, six, just to preface this, I have read Marvel comics for many years, but I have always steered clear of the Alias Jessica Jones series, just because I was never in the right mood for like a noirish detective style mm-hmm. story. I would get my Jessica Jones and Luke Cage fix by reading issues of New Avengers when Luke Cage was on the team and stuff like that. That's primarily where I know them from. And I've heard the lore of that run and the characters they built and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's permeated. So, as far as the series goes, I'm going in very spoiler-free, not knowing lots of details. And it's been a pleasure to do it like that. And um, I'm not a... You know, I read comics, but I never read Jessica Jones. I didn't read a lot of Luke I was aware of... You know, a lot of these things I'm, like, aware of. Like, I was never... Like, I didn't read all the issues, but, you know, I was always one of those people that read the stories and read articles and read reviews and stuff like that. So I'm aware of these characters. I know who they are. Um, Actually, Jessica Jones, I was not as familiar with. I was more familiar with Luke Cage. Definitely know who Luke Cage was. But Jessica Jones was actually kind of a new thing for me when they first advertised they were going to make a Jessica Jones show, I was like, who the fuck is Jessica Jones? I was like, what the hell is this? But I, I'm really cool. I'm really glad that this is my introduction to Jessica Jones, because it makes me excited to read comics and read more story involving her. Um, the show stars oh, Kristen we... Ritter. Yeah. I'm going to start off with... Go for it, yeah. Kristen Ritter, David Tennant... And who plays Luke Cage? Because I don't have his name. Oh, I don't know his name. But we're gonna. I'm gonna look up the IMDb right wow, now. Wow, we're we're so good. At we're this. we're that good at this. Yeah, but we're like a genius. Wait, initially when when uh, when all the net, we're Marvel fans. We've watched probably all the Marvel movies oh, in theaters for sure. Mm-hmm. We, uh, if you want to get a, an idea of our Marvel Netflix love, check out Chapter 45 of the Vundacast, where oh, we discuss Daredevil at length. Yes. So feel free to to stop this podcast, check out that podcast, and come back to this podcast, or not, or just continue this podcast. Okay, so to to start over, the series stars Kristen Ritter. Yes. Kristen Ritter of she's in a lot of things, but I think the most famous thing she did, or the most cult cult favorite thing she did, was the Bee in Apartment Twenty Three, which if you've never seen, it was a canceled series. Um, starring Kristen Ritter and James Vanderbeek, of all people, as James Vanderbeek, which was, surprisingly, he was hilarious. Mm-hmm. He plays himself, but, like, obviously a heightened version of himself. And it's a really funny show. Um, Wasn't she also um, Jesse Pinkman's girlfriend? Yes. On Breaking Bad she for was all also TV nerds? For the TV nerd, yes, I guess that's some... But for me... I love her in the Bean Apartment Twenty Three. Okay. I mean, and she was Jesse Pinkman's girlfriend, but she was and she's been working for start. years. No, you know. no, she's she's one of those actresses who's been working for years consistently. She's beautiful. She's a great actress. She's funny. She's got a great wit. I love her characters. I love and her, her father. Her if I'm not mistaken, is John Ritter, right? Is John Ritter? I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm pretty sure that. it is. 
I'm not going to confirm I'm going to go out on a ledge, and IMDb will confirm or deny? Uh, you will confirm or deny? IMDb, will you confirm or deny this allegation? Yeah, let me see. That John Ritter is her father, the late, great the John late, Ritter. The late, great John Ritter is her father. Three's Trivia. company, come and knock on our door. Uh, is she related to a guy just cause they have who the has same the same name. last name as her I'm again? Talking, it doesn't say that she is the... The daughter of that would John be the Mayer. front page news, though. I f- exactly. I feel so. That. Okay. Uh, anyway, I guess it's denying it. Denying it for now. I'll look up her Wikipedia page in a second. Um, also stars Mike Coulter. I'm sorry, as Luke Cage. Um, David Tennant as Kilgrave, who we will discuss in a minute because I don't want to pee my pants right now. And Rachel Taylor as <laughs> Trish Walker, uh, Jessica Jones's friend. Also, kind of like her, um, her uh, sister, her her what? um, ado- her adopted sister. What is and she? Not what her it? adopted sister. Her um, her what best friend slash surrogate, like, sister. surrogate sister. Surrogate sister. Yeah, and Carrie Ann Moss as uh, Jer- Jerry Hogarth, who plays a very sexy lawyer lady. Um, good yeah. character. Cold as ice. Like Cold as ice. Super, but super hot. In the in the most like non uh, misogynist way, she's like a super like cold bitch. Yeah, but in the in a cool way, like, I like yeah. it. Um, anyway, so those are the people that are in the movie. Pretty awesome cast characters. Pretty big names. Um, the wait. First thing, what, what, Netflix. What, before you start, first thing, Netflix. Uh huh. You have this as Kristen Ritter, David Tennant, and Rachel Taylor. Yes. Are the three big stars on this? What has Rachel Taylor done to upstage? Uh, Mike Coulter. Uh, Mike Cage. Coulter, rise, rising star. Well, she Who? did Transformers. Oh. Oh. She's the girl from, from Transformers. Transformers Three. I'm sitting here thinking, who the fuck is this chick? So I she's the Megan Fox face. replacement. She was the the not the Megan Fox replacement. Oh, from, wait, is she, which Transformers? Transformers, the first movie. Is this the first movie? Who was she in the first movie? She's nobody in the first movie. Maggie Madsen. Who the hell? I don't remember Who's the second girl in the, if if only your brother, the biggest Transformers genius in the world. Oh, he loves Transformers. No, 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 He likes Transformers. Would deign his voice to be on a podcast. He likes Transformers. He hates Michael Bay's Transformers. (laughs) That's true. So it's not even a cow. It doesn't count. I don't remember who she was. I'm seeing her. I know her face, but I cannot, for the life of me, um, like pinpoint the things that I've seen her in. Um, oh, 666 Park Avenue. I actually remember her in that. Oh, that, that show was canceled. about like, the devil. Oh, this is how I know her. Grey's Anatomy. Um, she was in eight episodes of Grey's Anatomy. Everybody's on Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, everyone's been on Grey's Anatomy. And those are the biggest things that I've seen her do. And then she was in apparently Transformers. Um, she must have been a lot younger because that was in 2007. If you want to tweet us the link with the scene where Maggie Madsen is in Transformers, is in Transformers? that would that would make me very happy. It, you can tweet us at Vundacast or at Rachel Vunda Taylor. Blog. Her character name is Maggie Madsen. Oh, I get what you're saying. The Maggie Madsen scene. Ha 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 ha! I get it again. Yeah, yeah. I'm going uh, deep cuts from now on. Cuts? That's gonna be my 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 my, my like Transformers reference. I'm gonna be like, cuts, oh yeah, Maggie cuts. Madsen style. All right. Um. So. So this stars a pretty good uh, cast of characters. Uh, Mike Coulter. The most famous thing... Oh, he's been in some serious stuff. He was in uh, Million Dollar Baby, Zero Dark Thirty. Obviously, probably as a side actor. I know we haven't seen him in anything super big. Uh, he's been around. The Following. Oh, I think I remember him in The Following. American Horror Story. Um, yeah. Oh, this is the most famous thing he did. The Halo Nightfall series. I remember his face. Um, for the gamers out there, Halo Nightfall, yeah, it was like that little, it was that little mini thing that they did to show that they could make a Halo movie kind of thing, or it was like a fan thing. My brother would know more about it. Um, maybe if I text my brother, he'll come and tell me No, but he about, doesn't want to, he doesn't want to talk on air. He doesn't want to talk on air? He, he like might talk on, on air about Halo Nightfall. He doesn't like talking I'm just going to text him. Anyway, let's continue talking about Jessica Jones. So, Jessica Jones. Um, is awesome. We're enjoying it very much. We Six, started the I have first... to, I have to eat my own words, because... Yes. The first, like, 16 minutes... No, the first, like, 10 minutes of the TV show 
where it's just her like investigating people. He was so not into. I it was at first. like, come on, he, let something felt, cool happen. He felt way too like it was Law and Order, Special Victims Unit, yeah. Star- Marvel. It was and just started off with a lot of legwork, which they haven't really gone back to heavily. So that's good. But the thing, but is, they were is just setting it up. You they know? were setting up the noir quality, the detective quality of what goes on in the show. You know, like her personal narrative. I think that they they have a first person narrative, which I sometimes can, if you're not careful with a first person narrative, can get really tedious. But I think they've done it very well. I think they use it in strategic moments, and uh, I appreciate it. Oh, here's my brother, Dom's. Zena and Zena's here, by the way. Zena's here. Dom's talk. Halo Nightfall. Was that a fan thing, or oh, was that a? That was that was a, that was a show to show off the new character Locke. Played by my Coulter. Who, who's, uh, who's Luke Cage? Who was directed? It was directed by Steven Spielberg. Oh, okay. So Whoa. it was to show. It was a so or was I Scott? was. So I was right. It was to show that they could make a Halo movie, right? Well, kind of. Nightfall was the first miniseries before. Well, no, not Nightfall. Four Nights of Dawn was the first before Nightfall. Oh, okay, 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 okay. But they were produced by Spielberg, I think. No, no. They were directed. Four, by no, no. I think Internet Spielberg both. directed Nightfall. And Four Nights of Dawn was made before even Halo Four came out. Okay, okay, okay. So was was Mike Coulter's character what's his name Locke? Yes. Was he in the game? He was in. He's in Halo Five Guardians. He's the main. He's one of the. He's the main character of his own team. It says directed by so Mike- Sergio Mimica Gazan. They probably produced by Steven Spielberg then. Okay, yeah. Does uh? So does he voice his own character in the game? Yeah, he, they lock him down. It's a live not action show. Not just by voice, but also face. It's a live action wow. show. Yeah, see, look. It was so live he's action. like a full-on Spartan. He became and a Spartan. And he's Luke Cage now. Yeah. God, when you Come get, on. like, one awesome part, they just, like, freaking throw you a million awesome parts. Well, that was his breakthrough role, I guess. All right, thanks, Dom. So that was my brother, Dominic, yeah. contributing to podcast. We need facts. Huh? We need, we need facts. Facts. <laughs> facts. Or we're doing a, a, half, a halfway Jessica Jones podcast because we're about to start episode seven. Oh, okay. What episode are you on? Still on four. Still on four. Okay. You need a little break. How you how from you doing with it? You darkness. like it so far? It's good. Da- David Tennant's pretty creepy, huh? Yeah, he's pretty no, horrifying. He's pretty creepy, yeah. It's horrible. All right. Um. Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Tom. No Bye. <laughs> so we started watching the show. Stephen was a little hesitant at first, but now we're very very into it. My favorite thing about watching Netflix shows is you don't have to wait. You can just binge watch, but of course, then comes the inevitable. What do they call it? Show hole. There was that <laughs> really funny commercial with Malcolm McDowell doing the voice, the voiceover work. They call it a show hole where you get depressed because your show's over and you don't have any more show to watch. It's true. I totally get that. It just becomes a void. It becomes but you know that void will be easily filled, filled with by chores and life. Exactly. And awesome no, things. but by another show. That's the funny thing is it's kind of like you know you get into it, like that kind of depression, like oh shit, I finished the show, I don't have any more show. But then there's so many other shows to watch. I mean, we haven't finished catching up on The Walking Dead. We haven't finished catching up on Arrow. We got tons of other things to do. And we we haven't even delved into Agents of Shield, which Agents of Shield. This is what I think I want to watch next. That's yeah, you, you have, we've been really behind Just on a lot the of stuff. Pull Marvel thread. Pull Marvel thread. Start unraveling it. So we've been very, uh, you know, we got a lot of we got a lot of stuff. It's I, been busy in the universe. Um, yeah, not just TV, guys. We promise, actual life, actual life happening. TV does not an excuse to be busy, even though I don't know. At, at sometimes at this point in, in our reality, with the access that we have to technology, I feel like being busy with TV is a legitimate excuse now. <laughs> Especially when you're running like a podcast or you're doing any kind of entertainment yeah, for news sure. reporting, it is actually part of our life. If we don't stay relevant and watch TV, then we have nothing to talk about. I mean, we could talk about every Disney Adventures magazine from from 1990 to when. Do you want to start that podcast? <laughs> the Disney Adventures. First of all, I would have to the find, guide to Disney Adventures. First of all, I would have, to, have to buy track down an eBay every, Disney. I'm yeah. sure they they have an eBay one, which probably oh is like gosh. a few hundred dollars at this point. I have one issue of Disney Adventures left, or the X Men issue, and I kept it, even though the stickers are missing because I took I took them out when I was a little kid. And I love this magazine because I I filled out all the quizzes and I wrote down all the things and stuff like that. But um, Disney Adventures was a great. Whoever was around for the era of Disney Adventures, we were very lucky. Disney it was Adventures was the by bomb. far the be- the most entertaining. Magazine Kids on magazine, the yeah. shelf of a grocery store. It had comics, it had interviews, it had all kinds of stuff, 
and it didn't just have, you know, this is back before Disney kind of decided to close ranks and only focus on their Disney properties. So they had a lot of stuff, interviews with other programs like Earth 2. Remember that Earth 2 show? Um, Ryan, yeah. was it called Earth 2? That was that was late though. That was like in the in the two thousand. No, it was in the nineties. No, no, Earth no. Earth two. Nineties. Not maybe it's not Earth two, but it's that it's that show where they had that little creature and they and the, the little boy that was kind of sickly and they lived on a planet. And, you don't remember that show? I don't a know. Sickly boy who lived on a planet with a creature. Yes. Anyway, I I will I will find the name. I think it's Earth Two. I'm not crazy. Anyway, so no, but it focused. The thing about okay, Disney you're Adventures. You're not crazy, Andrew. The thing about Disney Adventures is it focused on a lot of other properties besides Disney. Nowadays, Disney's kind of closed ranks because they own so much property. They can close ranks. They don't need to focus on anything else. But back in the day, Disney had fucking tur- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. At, at Disney World, they had all kinds of stuff, and they had interviews with other people and other movies and other properties. <coughs> you know, it's ki- it was kind of an interesting time for Disney. I wonder they, if uh, they should have they should do like a retro Disney Adventures issue where they talk about the Netflix shows and they're like help you deal with the darkness. Should, they, they won't. I mean, at this point, <laughs> at this point in in the in the the world of publishing, they won't bring back Disney Adventures. Not not in a published format. Um, but Disney like, Adventures okay. but Disney Adventures was the bomb. I love Disney Adventures. I had every issue, and unfortunately, when I was younger, I mean, well, because I was young, I got rid of them because I was like, you know, I don't need these things. Yeah, they're, they're old just, and beat up, and yeah. I read and them you all. You don't have the hoarder gene. Yeah, you know, and it's just the same way that I, I, when I was a kid, I had every copy of Seventeen magazine that I'd ever gotten, and I was like, time to give these up. <laughs> no more Seventeen oh, magazine. Man. I know, right? The classic Seventeen magazine. You had a penny for each Seventeen magazine. <laughs> but um, you have a few pennies. But anyway, yeah. So Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Back to that. Um, what was I talking about Disney Adventures for? I have no idea. We, ch- we went on a tangent. It'll make sense in the... the when and we, when we re listen to it, I'm sure yeah, it'll, it'll make, make sense. Yeah, it'll make sense. Anyway, But so. it was Disney. It was Disney, Jessica Jones, Netflix, Disney, Marvel, ABC yeah. Studios. There we go. Something like that. Something, something like that. That's something on, that was the connection. That was the connection. So. Probably. Maybe. So, we're watching the show. It is like... Like, first off, Jessica Jones, she's a great character. She's very flawed... She's got, you know, a lot of darkness in her past. Um, if you haven't seen six episodes of Jessica Jones, stop what you're doing. Watch six episodes of Jessica Jones right now. What what I think, what I take immediately away from her character is the decisions to make her basically a victim of um, abuse. Yeah. She's a recovering abuse victim. And I mean, in every way that she could be abused, she was abused by this guy Kilgrave. Worse than every way. Worse, because it's I mean, like... It's super it's powered, super disturbing. Yes, it's and I think that it, it's an interesting thing to explore. What I like about, I mean, sometimes the Marvel movies tap into this, just how scary people with powers really can be over the average citizen. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't. But you know, they can't go too dark. They can't go too into that because it's it's got to stay on some sort of lighter level for the kids and to sell merchandise and toys but what i like about the marvel series is they can really go into how to what it is to be dark with a power you know what i mean that that these powers are they don't just because you have powers it doesn't make you any more of any like you doesn't make you any better of a person Mm -hmm. you you have to choose to be a better person you know what i mean (laughs) sorry dina just uh tossed things against the wall like she was playing handball with herself or something um but yeah, like it, you have to choose to be a better person. You don't just become a better person just because you can lift a car or punch a hole in a wall. Yeah, and, it's a, there's a morality, and especially and Jessica even, Jones yeah. plays with that choice and what's even, more than any show because every yeah. other show it's sort of like we're waiting for them to make the big decision to do the right thing. And Jessica Jones because thus far, the, 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 the first episode. The worst was, part is uh, no, but the worst part is what I think is horrifying is the fact that she made the decision to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. She wanted to be a hero, you know what I mean? She she was toying very really toying with the idea of putting on the costume and being a superhero, and then this guy fucking took all of that away from her. To call that hope, he's, all the naivete. He stripped away her hope and that's nasty i'm sorry but this guy he to date 
is one of the worst, if not the worst, Marvel hero a villain they've put on screen. This is Absolutely, a fact. Absolutely, I'm sorry. This is a fact. The the Netflix villains are worse. are way better and yeah and way scarier and way more horrible than any, than of, any the of the movie, movie villains, villains. including Loki, including Loki, because and unfortunately that is the the shortcomings of the movies. They can't get too heavy. So they can't play, and they also have only have two and a half hours to play with time. So they can't explore these characters' so, motivations. Think about Loki it. Loki is the best one simply because he's ha- first of all, Tom so, Hiddleston is a fantastic yeah. actor. Second of all, he's had the most he's had three time movies to, to explore, explore his character. His character. So, so think, we, oh, and think about this: the movies. Each movie you get. Uh, two hours with the main character, hypothetically. Of that two hours with the main character, you probably get 30 to 40 minutes a with villain. the villain. Mm-hmm. So already with just two, with six episodes of Jessica Jones, we've probably gotten like... 60 minutes. Yeah. 60 minutes of at least... Just m- villain. Of Kilgrave. Yeah. When we we would only have, if this was a film or if this was anything else... Maybe 30 we'd, we'd have We'd have samplings. Like, yeah. it's... It's like watching a YouTube clips of a villain and wanting to sell that for an entire movie. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to watching like a full length film already about this villain. And I feel that and I feel that these show the Marvel shows so far, they understand how important it is to explore the hero uh, the villain as much as the hero. Like if you you can't have a 13 episode show with no compelling hero. Mm-hmm. I mean, villain. But let's also explore that because let's talk about a little bit about Agents of Shield. Mm. Because the Agents of Shield. And actually, we're, we, we've only seen Agents of Shield season one and two. We're not yes, up to date yet. We're not up to date yet. But season, the, you know, I would actually argue that these shows also have better villains than Agents of Shield because Agents of Shield villains are very. Uh, well, who has been Agents of Shield's best villain? I would say, um, fucking the the guy that they betrayed them. Um, Bill Paxton? No, not Bill Paxton. His Agent Ward. Agent Ward. See, I would say Bill Paxton. No, I'd say Ward. But Ward, and why is he the best villain? Because he he's had the most screen time. He's had the most screen time, and he's had the most character development. Yeah. And I think that Ward is their best villain just because he keeps coming back and he keeps... But... But, even, and even but then, now... But I don't know about the new season, but... Yeah. So far with Ward, we're sort of experiencing a problem where that is the TV problem that movies don't have, is that a character's been around so long... You're trying to get tired. It feels like... Yeah. Not tired, but just like... You're trying to see like, oh, the Where's writers... The writers go? have more... Have to figure out what to do with him to keep him around. Yeah. To keep him a part of the show now. And they've already done so much gymnastics with him. That you wonder how much they, more they can do. I, You know, but that's a thing, too. But I don't know. It, it's also the structure of the storytelling in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think it's a little more comic booky, And I mean that in the way that's very much like, we are the we are the heroes. We stop the bad guys. You know, and then there's something wrong. I'm not criticizing that. I'm not criticizing that. But when it comes to a villain, but this is what the thing for me at least, in my opinion, when it comes to a villain that makes you shiver when they come on screen, that kind of formatting doesn't terrify me. You know what I mean? That kind of villain is the kind of villain you're like, man, I can't wait for that hero to knock his block off or something. You know what I mean? You don't get afraid of that villain. Not like you get, af- not like I'm afraid of like Kingpin. Not like I'm afraid of Kilgrave. You know what I mean? Because the Marvel series on Netflix is uh, Netflix. Netflix is Netflix is so character driven. These villains are truly terrifying because they are so terribly human. You know what I mean? Like Kingpin was so terribly human because he wanted to control everything, and he was a psychopath. But his motivation made sense, knowing his background, knowing where he'd come from, and. A lot of that came from power. And then Kilgrave, he's just a fucking psychopath. Like, he loves control. And he is... And and it's so it's so real, the depth of... Oh my gosh. What would a human being do if they could just make anyone around them do whatever they want? What did you just do? I just found you just out yourself? who the villain behind the show is. The real villain. The creator of the show. Uh-huh. The creative person. Because, you know, we really like the show. This is yeah. a great creative person. Okay. 
Her first credit... Is it Catherine Hardwick? No. Oh. Her first credit, she worked on The Outer Limits, did some episodes of Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. Uh-huh. That's fine and dandy. She did Dark Skies, she worked on Hercules, a couple episodes. Uh, she did The Magnificent Seven TV show, which I always wanted to watch, but never have. Five episodes of Party of Five, I heard that she's a female. Her name is Melissa Rosenberg. Uh-huh. Okay, is that ringing any bells? No. Okay, she did an episode of Adam McBeal. Okay, okay, none of okay, that Okay, blah, 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 all that take stuff. It, take us to the, take she, it has, to the she has some juice. comic book cred. Take us to the She juice. worked on the failed pilot of uh, of Birds of Prey back in the day. Mm-hmm. It's got a little comic book cred. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> the build-up, the anticipation. Then, in the year 2008, mm-hmm. she wrote the screenplay, or adapted the screenplay, for the feature film Twilight, Twilight Saga New Moon, Twilight Saga Eclipse, Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn, Breaking Dawn Part 2, and uh, now my heart. her endeavor of choice is Jessica Jones. So, now... I actually think, and let me tell you something, I, she did it for, she did it for the vine, alright? She did it for the money. At Melissa Rosenberg, or at Tall Girl Mel, Melissa Rosenberg. She did it for you, the money. She you, did it for the money. She did, I know she did Twilight for the money. You are converting hearts and minds right now. I know. I'm good for you. Jessica Jones but is. you know what? And you can't blame her for the failings of Twilight. No. Only Stephanie Meyer takes responsibility no. for that yeah, yeah. piece of garbage trash that is the Twilight series. Anyway, moving yeah. back to Jessica but, Jones. But in a way, like, before we totally just uh-huh. shrug off her past and move forward with it, because... <laughs> We're not going to judge anyone on their past actions. For all we know, when she did the Twilight movie, she might have been in control by Stephanie she Myers might be snorted. Killgrave. She might have been snorting fucking know, grams Stephanie of Stephanie Myers today. might be the real Killgrave. Kill and, and she's and just been influencing everyone to buy her book. I believe that. Okay? I believe only mind control would make us all go so mad. So she already has a big pile of cash. Yes. She doesn't need the show, really. Not really. This is just to save her cred. Yeah, you think? This is like... She this could do anything. Show, she could really show, do anything. Yeah. She could do anything. This is to show, like, hey, man, I got fucking talent. I don't just have to write fucking werewolves falling in love with babies. I'll adapt something good. Yeah. Something scary, and I'm going to make your... Melissa Rosenberg, are you proud of your Twilight work? Be honest with us. Tweet us at Voondablog. Or at Voondacast. At Voondacast. We're we're quickly turning into big fans. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, this is... Anyway, so let me get back to my discussion on villains. And who knows? Maybe she wrote the Twilight Saga, like, tongue-in-cheek. You know, maybe she wrote it from like a perspective of like, will they ever really make I this garbage from, into a movie? I think she wrote it from the perspective of I need to pay for my house and my kids probably have to go to college. That's what she wrote it from the I'm perspective sure, of. Yeah. She's a working writer. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Okay, somebody had to write fucking uh, the got what what movie just came out? The fucking gem in the holograms movie. Someone wrote that. Okay, someone had to make a living writing that movie. Sure. That happened. So we're all there. Anyway, so. The okay, villain story talking about villains. So, another Marvel TV show, uh, Agent Carter. I think Agent Carter actually has excellent villains, and their villains are pretty mm-hmm. creepy, yeah. Um, but they're still also and there's a big threat, you know, those yes. like feeling and of I actually feel that That's the Agent cool. Carter villains are pretty menacing. For instance, like the female, the, the female spy, the, yeah. the Russian spy who's ostensibly How- Black Widow senior, yes, however. It's still there's, there's, they still feel less. They, there's a distance to those villains because because of the format of those kinds of shows, because of the comic booky format, and what I mean that you know, know what I mean the limitations the cla- of the network, the classic format. Yeah. There's li- and the, also yes, the limitations of the network. There is a distance between those villains and us. We look at them and we go, these are arca- these are archetypes, and they're great archetypes, and they work, okay. and they're ow. And they're fun, no, but Zena they nipping. Zena, don't nip me. And there's and you know they're fun. She tried to eat my middle toe. What the heck was that? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> now she's trying to apologize. She's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Every time you say "ow" and you really mean it, she looks at you like, Oh no, what did I do? But you have to really mean it, so you have to be an actual pain. You can't fake the pain. She's figured us out. If this is your first episode, Zena's our dog. You can see <laughs> her debut on like four or five podcasts ago. Okay. Anyway, so she uh, um. No, yeah, so they're archetypes. And the archetypal villains, you know, like I said, they, there's a distance between us and them. But the villains on these shows, there is no distance between us and these villains. They feel like the boogeyman next door. Like, the idea of Kilgrave is so terrifying and so disturbing. It's just kind of like... Holy shit. I mean, the, if you explore what he did, what he's done, 
he's a rapist. And he's not a rapist of just your body, of your soul, of your mind, of your being. He rapes your family, destroys your families. There are no I mean, limitations. There are no limitations to, to how the amount evil of suffering he will, he will allow, allow your other people to do. And and just so casually, that's the thing. What they're exploring is the idea exactly, like I said before. What would happen if a human being just got the ability to do whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted, to whomever he wanted? I mean, it's like, the, and he's a psychopath. That is the most ter a sociopath with absolutely no limitations is the most terrifying thing I could imagine mm -hmm. because they've already got no real sense of right and wrong. Not like ours. They they mimic right and wrong because they learn it from normal people to blend in, but they don't really have a real sense of right and wrong. It's 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 something that's developed and formed and influenced, but it's not really like internalized, like a sense of compassion and empathy, like a person without sociopathy has psychopathy. That's not something that that. That a person with a sociopath has they have a completely different way of thinking so the idea that he and he's a full-blown psychopath he's not just a sociopath because there are many sociopaths who live normal lives who adapt become human beings relatively successful human beings and are around other people and maybe love and i don't know you know i'm not a psychologist they're functional they're functional a psychopath is a full-blown i don't give a fuck i do what i want i'm gonna kill i'm gonna, I'm gonna be violent or whatever the hell manipulative and nuts and this guy is every one of those things. And what he did to Jessica was so horrific that it's like, how do you, I mean, yeah, like, you are right there with her. The PTSD that she's suffering is so real and so visceral. You know, ex you don't, you can't even spend a second going, oh, what's her problem? No, you know exactly what her problem is. Like, I will not, like, Steven, I remember we were watching the show and that episode where the guy, Kilgrave, made that guy donate both his kidneys to him. That broke and then my heart in two. Steven was so disturbed. He, I all thought he was about to tell me to turn it off for a second. I thought he needed a break at that point because that was just the darkest shit. I mean, this guy... And then the worst part is that he basically left him with his psychotic mother who's you know, insane sense of what God is and isn't, right, is just totally destroying this guy's mind even further. And and the worst part, to know that he's trapped in his body. And Kilgrave did this to him without a second thought. And didn't kill him. Didn't and, let him die. Didn't explain anything. Nothing. And he made, he made him... The worst part is Kilgrave makes these people feel like they want, want to, to do, do these it, things and shows he's doing he changes the feelings inside of you yes like no other villain does that your own feelings exactly he made that what like what malcolm said he said i can't tell if all these things that he made me do were inside of me all along he literally makes you question your entire self that's fucking evil and so far the the thing the one thing i'll say is this show hasn't like kingpin he had kind of a, a sad story. You know what I mean? You felt for Kingpin. Kilgrave so far, and I don't think they're going to do it. I have absolutely no empathy, sympathy, relatableness, re any, relate, any way to relate I, to this character. And maybe, technically, maybe that's a failing. But I don't know, no. because I think he's meant to just be a force of evil. Yeah. He's meant to just he's the, be... He's the devil. He's, he's the, the devil. devil. He's lit the. What Jessica says, he's the devil. And I, and I don't... And I think it works. You know, sometimes people don't like that because they want to relate to the villain. I don't always think but you have to relate to the villain. it's scarier than the Joker. He's worse than the, the Joker, Joker right now. Because, okay, exactly. Think about this. Do we relate to the Joker... Do we ever relate to the Joker? No. Do we ever go, he's man, a chaotic force. he's a chaotic force, but do we ever go, he's not a good villain? Of course not. He's in a fantastic villain. You don't always We have relate to him in an escapist way where we wish we could be that... That nuts? N not that nuts, but that he's he's emotionally, f he's free in a way. I guess, yeah. You know? And but like, but it's kind of like, like, but that. at the end of the day, you don't relate to the Joker. Uh, and some people need to always relate to their villains. And yes, sometimes it's very good to have a villain that you can understand their storyline. But I don't always think you need to relate to a villain. Sometimes I think you should just be afraid of a villain. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that works. That's that's why I think their genius casting was, they wrote Kilgrave so horrible, and they realized he was so horrible, they were like, if we give Kilgrave to some unknown actor, 
no that one guy will, will, yeah. that guy will, will Never, die yeah. he'll get killed people will hate him, him yeah. people will spit in his face people will look at him like he's scum for the rest of his life we have to take the most beloved something and twist and him. twist it into evil that way his persona will be able to survive and he'll be able to live a normal yeah. life so they took nothing, the most well-loved doctor yes in all of nerddom doctor who the ninth doctor david tennant and, and they they've just, they've yeah. perverted him and given him such a horrible character. It's oh my like, god! Like horrible in the he's right not the way. Ninth doctor, he's the tenth doctor. He's the tenth doctor. No, I'm pretty sure he's the ninth doctor. The ninth doctor was Eccleston. Was he? Okay, yeah. that may be true. I don't know. I'm not a Google it. I'm, I'm not pretty, a Whovian. Yeah, you're not a Whovian. Oh God, Carolyn would be killing us right now. Okay, I should talk to okay. Carolyn. Um, no, Who he's the tenth. My love. The, Ninth Doctor. Time for a Google fact. He's googling. If you're not down with the I want to. I want to test my Who knowledge. My Whovian who knowledge. The Google fact? Who is the Ninth Doctor? The Ninth Doctor is an incarnation of the Doctor. Okay, Wikipedia. Load up. Christopher Eccleston. You are ha! correct. So my Whovian knowledge wins. Okay, he's the yes. Tenth Doctor. Because I know nothing. I'm you, not a Whovian. And okay? you guys have to understand. Tenth Doctor was like, I have not watched Matt Smith, and I have not watched Peter Capaldi, because I have not been able to get past the end of Doctor Who, the Tenth Doctor series. And I know they always say, don't get attached to Doctors, but the Tenth Doctor was my life. Yeah. And when he died, I wept. Steven was asleep. He'd been trying to finish the series with me, but he was asleep. I sat in this bed. I cried like someone had killed me like i was so upset when he said i don't want to go i was just i burst into tears and i haven't been able to watch matt smith and i haven't been able to watch any new who since then i have not i that's right i'm that behind because i loved him so much so to see him as a fucking psychopathic rapist it's it's pretty hard. It's yeah. pretty nasty. And, I mean, he's an actor, so I tried to just, like, you know, separate that. But even people on the internet, I was already reading articles talking about how they're really having a struggle dealing with this. Because he's, like, taking our good memories of Doctor, of the Tenth Doctor and being like, twist, knife, stab. Which is not fair, because he's an actor and he should be able to do what he wants. But it's you know it's hard it's a it's a psychological thing you get attached to somebody you get attached to who they are i think that's one of the reasons why his hair is different like i don't think it would have been too much to give him 10th that, doctor that hair frizz, and that, that wildness that wildness and but that's the thing kilgrave's not a wild man but what's weird everything is he that does is so controlled he's wearing the doctor was known for wearing for being a so well, did he wear purple he wore purple right mm -mm. no what, what was his suit what was his outfit he wore tweed tweed mm -hmm. okay kilgrave doesn't wear tweed he wears pinstripes um well the TARDIS is purple and TARDIS is blue. Tardis colorblind is blue. face. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Steven's colorblind, sorry guys. <laughs> colorblind shame on a So the whole time the TARDIS has been purple to you? It's not colorblind shame, it's just the TARDIS is blue, my love. <laughs> Facts I didn't know. <laughs> the TARDIS is blue. It's a policeman's box. It's a blue, it's a call box. Um so yeah, no, this guy is, um, this guy is, uh, scary. Is scary as hell. Um, he, he has, the, the show starts on a similar premise, D uh, Danny noticed, that both Daredevil and this show start off with a blonde in jeopardy. Yes. And our main hero having to vouch for the welfare of this person and try to improve their lives. And take him back to sort of normalcy, mm -hmm. if possible. Now we have this character of oh, Zena wants to go outside, so let's pause this podcast. Pause it right here because the dog demands it. All right, pause it. Stop. Yeah. Hey, Vundacast listeners, this is Steven interrupting the Vundacast already in progress to advertise my new podcast that is dedicated to my favorite movie, Big Trouble in Little China. The show is called simply BTILC. We have cool interviews with Gerald Okamura and Big Trouble in Little China fans just like you. Check it out at btilc.com. Tweet and follow us at BTILC Podcast and Facebook.com. Search BTILC to like it. BTILC is a Rad Bordy podcast, so you can find it on the front page of badbordy.com. And you can use the code Big Trouble to save 50%. Off a bad boardy membership, and now more of the Vundacast. So we're back. 
you just heard an awesome commercial for my new podcast, the BTILC podcast, all about the greatest movie ever made, Big Trouble in Little China. Check it out. It's amazing. Way better than watching Jessica Jones, right, Danny? Of course, yeah. See? Even Danny agrees. Absolutely. No, I support your projects. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not as big into the Big Trouble in Little China as you, but you love it. I think it's an interesting topic. He's already found some pretty cool people to interview. Um, so, you know, good yeah. job. Interview anyway. Gerald Okamura. Yes. Super exciting. He should get a job on Jessica Jones. Come on, hook him up. Yes. Do yeah. do a LA episode just to feature him, guys. <laughs> Come on, Melissa Rosenberg, write him in. Write him in. Anyway, all right. So Jessica Jones. So yeah. So Kilgrave's a pretty fucking terrifying guy. I think one of the best, if not the best, Marvel villain we've seen. And then let's talk about Luke Cage because that's also a big deal because he's going to get his own series. Yeah. Um, what What I thought was interesting was. I was expecting a way slower burn on the relationships. With them. With them, especially because I know in the comics they become married and they have a kid and things escalate. Um, they, they, they have moments when they break up because uh, of, you know, scroll invasions, things like yeah. that. But other than that, you know, they're... They're pretty young. They're pretty well, solid. Well, I think that the reason why they started the relationship this way is to show the kind of place that they're both in. Um, you know, at the start of the series, just By the end of episode one, they've banged at least they once. they banged, yes. But that's because these people are both self, two self-destructive people. You know what I mean? They seeking keep, comfort. Seeking comfort. What's it, Distraction. What's, the interesting thing is the idea that they both can't be harmed physically very easily, but they can be harmed very emotionally. They're both very emotionally damaged. Um, Cage, because he lost his wife, and Jessica, because of what Kilgrave did to her... And inter- and ironically, one of the things Kilgrave did to her was make her kill Cage's wife. Yeah, I and don't know. How, I'm fascinated to know how they're going to come back from that. If they're going to come back from it at all. Yes, and I'm he's also in every episode of this show. They have to come back from it eventually. Yeah, but I'm fascinated to know how much of this is the original writer Brian Michael Bendis, mm-hmm. like weaving the plot and them just following it, mm-hmm. and how much is themselves. I'm definitely going to order Jessica Jones or Alias off of. Uh, Amazon pretty soon just to follow along once we finish the series mm-hmm. because it has very much piqued my interest. Yeah. Um, Luke Cage is super cool. He's super tough. He's, he said he said his his catchphrase "Sweet Christmas" a couple times. A couple times to awesome use. Well, the first time after he had sex. Yeah. And the second time when he found like giant field fields, of pot. fields a they, warehouse full of pot. They've definitely written it in the most perfect times in in a time when we needed a little levity. And um, they did it right. They made it work. Because Sweet Christmas is a pretty cheesy catchphrase. So yeah. to, to make it work is, is a feat, is a talent, is a talent in itself. Um, Mike Coulter is a great cage. I think that he plays the character really well. He's good. Um, I, the, the thing is, though, like, just the way the show is shot visually, mm-hmm. it's much more noir. So I'm really excited to see the way they're going to show off his is. physique yeah. when it's more about being heroic yeah. and heroism and getting licked in the face by a dog while you're trying to talk <laughs> on a podcast. <laughs> oh, dog attack. Um, this is the life of the puppy, guys. Um, so I know, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm very interested to see how they're going to do the show. I'm excited now for the Kate show because I know that this guy can really pull off his character and and stuff like that. I want to know if they're going to actually... Because right now, the last thing we saw of Jessica Jones and and her relationship with Cage is that she admitted that she killed his wife and he is just destroyed because he's like, you let me have sex with you and the whole time your hands are the ones that killed my wife. I don't know how... And he got so, like, serious with it, like, so adult with it. He's like, you let me inside Inside you. you. Yeah, I was like, whoa, that was a lot. And I I think he meant that both literally and figuratively because, you know, they kind of had that in moment where they both have powers and they understand each other. It's very sad, and I don't know if he's going to forgive her. And the thing is, is that at the same... I, I completely understand if he doesn't forgive her, but I want him to forgive her because I feel... I think she fucked up. She should have told him, obviously, but that's that's not what makes a show a show. If she had just told him, you know... There wouldn't be all the drama exactly. and things so I we wonder, enjoy and plot. I think, I think that he's going... I think that if... Uh, what I think might happen, and this is my possible... I don't want any spoilers, guys. This is not a spoiler. I think that what's going to happen is... Speculation. Kil- Kil- Kilgrave's going to get a hold of him, and he's going to understand just how strong a hold Kilgrave has on you once he has you. 
And I think that's going to help That's going to be the redemptive way? Yes. I think yeah. that's going to help him understand she did not do this of her own volition. Yeah. And the reason why she drinks and she's miserable and she hates humanity is because of one of the things she had to do was fucking kill his wife. Yeah. I think it kills her inside. And she, well, we already saw that. I mean, when she saw the picture, she keeps having flashbacks to the moment she killed her. Mm. This is not something that she's passed. And she is traumatized she didn't you know and that's the sad thing is that i wonder if she felt that if she could be with him you know part of it was obviously for very selfish reasons she wanted to just kind of lose herself in him and whatever you know but at the same time maybe when she found out maybe she was like well maybe if i make him feel better or give him something better you know what i mean like i don't know like it was just one of those yeah. connect with pain kind of things mm. But I think that's what's going to happen. I think the only way for him to forgive her is to understand the extent of Kilgrave's powers. Yeah. Because and right now he doesn't I get it. The idea of Kilgrave having someone with unbreakable skin is obviously something terrifying. that is terrifying. Yes. And, the, and I guess, I hope, I wonder, are they setting up Kilgrave to be like... Luke Cage's main villain now? Because that would be, like, awesome. I hope they don't that kill him. That would be him. cool. I know, I want him to die so bad, but at the same time, I don't think they can kill him. No, he's never gonna die. I don't think they can kill this guy. They can paralyze him. I, they I can... feel that, I, I feel that he's too good of a villain. They didn't kill Kingpin. I feel he's too good of a villain. I feel that he's gotta kind of have a thing. Though, they maybe just be like, this guy's so evil, how could you not just want him to get mm. stabbed in the heart? Of course I want him to get stabbed in the heart. But at the same time, it's kind of like, do I want such an interesting villain to go away? But maybe there's a limit to his interestingness. Maybe by the time, by the end of the storyline, once Jessica Jones moves past it, he'll stop being interesting. That's possible. It's possible. Maybe but, that's one of the reasons why he's so interesting. I, is I just hold love on so the, the storytelling and the economic use of superpowers. Yes. You know, like, just mind control as a superpower is just such an economic superpower. It's a big idea that you can accomplish so, so cheaply. cheaply. yeah. And it's just so threatening and scary because it can be anybody, anywhere. The show definitely has played on my paranoia and uh, has ratcheted that And it really has up. played on the darkness. I mean, they had they have an abortion storyline. And they don't pull Basically, any, okay, and Hope storyline. Let's go through Hope storyline. Oh, let's go through Hope storyline. Let's talk okay, about the blonde. So Hope, she starts off... She's just a missing Hope, girl. Hope Hope is the the blonde, the blonde in trouble. She's a missing girl. She's a she's a volleyball player, right? Or Tra uh, track, track and field? Track and field. Yeah, she did the long jump. That was one of her competitions. Yeah. So they uh they set her up as like, you know, this very wholesome girl from Oklahoma who came to the city, who was doing great and had her life just all ahead of her. Everything was going to be you know, wonderful her, for her. And, dandy. and then one day, Kilgrave decides this is the person who I'm gonna fuck with. Who I'm gonna fuck with, and he takes her away from her roommate, from her but, entire life. But he takes makes her, her make decisions. But he takes her to fuck with Jessica. Yeah, I think he picked her because he knew how he thought he knew just how devastating it would be to take this girl's life who had everything ahead of her. And fucking just destroy her. And he makes her make decisions to purposefully end and derail her life. He makes yes. her quit the, the quit team. Quit the team. He makes her drop out of school. Lose her friends. Lose her friends. He makes her do these things, like irreparable things, like things that you can't explain away. And you can't get back from. You can't get back from. So she he ruins her life. Then that seemingly seems like the worst thing that happened. Besides her being abducted and probably raped. No, not probably. Actually. actually, Wait, wait. No, no. But as far as we know in the storyline. Yeah. Oh, well, when we first meet her. When we yeah. first meet her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, you know, we most likely know raped. It's implied. Yeah. But we don't know. Then the story unfolds. She ends up murdering her own parents. At his command. At his command. Seemingly after she'd been rescued. She murders her own parents at her own command. A horrible, you know... Greek tragedy, if there ever was one. Then, just when you think she's had enough, she's stuck in prison, she's screwed, her life's even worse, people are messing with her in prison, so it seems. No, wait, they're not just messing. She wanted them she's to mess with her, her in prison. because she's pregnant with the devil's child. child. And she, and so, the, I like the way they did the abortion storyline. They're not, nobody 
in there nobody said to her are you sure you don't want to keep this when when jessica said to her are you sure when she gave her the pill she didn't tell her are you sure you want to keep this baby she knows she doesn't want to keep this baby she just said are you sure you want to go through all this pain because the pill like makes her have a have a a miscarriage a violent miscarriage and so it's kind of like that's what she was asking are you sure about but but at the end of the day jessica knows exactly how she feels she would never want to carry the child for all we know jessica has satan made the same decision exactly the child of fucking satan in her belly like would ever want to carry this child and i like the way that they don't pull any punches nobody's coming here to guilt her and tell her anything it's just it is the absolute truth you would not want to carry that child to term that would make you feel sick and the the horror of the idea that you could produce another person who like has him. psychopathic and has that much power yes. that he has, and being responsible for bringing that into the world into the world is a nightmare. That would be way too much to handle. That's that's the equivalent of going back in time and killing Hitler. She made the choice. She's killing Hitler. She knows, <laughs> she knows Hitler's coming, and she's fucking like nip it in the bud. No Hitlers for me. Yeah. And I I I I love that storyline because it's so it just is like yeah how much more suffering can this girl handle man like. Fuck, dude, I really hope she has a happy ending at the end of the show because at this point, I don't understand how she's not taking the bed sheets and just hanging herself. I, I really like, want to make the, the subtitle of this episode like Jessica Jones talk and then no Hitlers for me. No Hitlers <laughs> for me. And so we are now we've seen an interesting thing because Hogarth, the lawyer, took the fetus and is going to do some tests on it. I wonder if she's trying to get the proof of, of Kilgrave existing. The question, I, I see the thing about Hogarth or Carrie Ann Moss's character is that. I is don't know if she's getting that fetus because she wants a, to create a Kilgrave for her own self or to exonerate Hope. Hope, yeah. She's got her own agenda. Now, here's an interesting thing. Um, and this can, we can go back to the to the fetus. Okay, so and I'll, just to go back to a little detail that we focused on, another speculative thing. Twice now we've heard Jessica say, um, people have said, if only we knew how he was controlling people. And twice we've heard Jessica say, it doesn't matter how he controls people. Yeah, she's turning All that mat- the She's like, it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter how he controls people. I just have to stop him. I actually think that they've repeated that twice now because I think it does fucking matter how he controls people. And I think that with that knowledge, yes, she has the knowledge of how to incapacitate him, right? She has the knowledge to... To, to put him out with stuff, but it, how, how you're going to get close to him is the issue. But the, I think the real way she's going to stop him is if she goes, if she says, finds out how he does these things that he does. It's, it, it matters. And maybe with this fetus, Hogarth is going to find out how it happens. You know that what I mean? That would be great. It's, that's a speculation. But I think that it matters. Jessica keeps saying it doesn't matter because she doesn't want to dwell on it because she doesn't want to think too much about him. But I absolutely think it matters 100%. And I think that it's the only way she's going to stop him is if she finds out how. How he does it. Already in the comics, we know that it's different because in the comics, Kilgrave has to touch you to control you. And well, this wait, that's series, not a fact. That's not a fact? I'm not sure. I don't know if that's speculation, like things I made up in my comic book. Oh, okay. Reading Brain while I'm reading him through, you know, issues of New Avengers and stuff like that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Or, you know, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. So it's possible that Kilgrave in the comics, let us know Forgetting. at Vindicast if this is true, that it's possible that Kilgrave had to touch people physically in order to control them, which would definitely be a limitation. This Kilgrave has no limitations. He just needs to be near you. Well, his limitations are time and distance. So he, but he needs to be near you. You have to be able to hear him so far. You have to be able to hear him. It's auditory. It's not a. It's, At least the first command. He can't sign language his way to your mind. At least um, my theory is that the first command has to be auditory, and then once he's once you've heard his voice, he's in your brain. Yeah, you think? And he can mind control you from there. Okay. That's my guess. Um. So anyway, but I I'm interested to find out if they're going to actually explore that theory and find out how he does the controlling that he does. Um, so that we can know more about it, because that might be the way to stop him. Um, and the- and hope, I yeah, hope is in every episode as well. So obviously she's an important character. We're gonna find out if she gets off, how she gets off, what's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Because um, right now she's in jail, and her poor twelve-year-old brother is stuck in foster care somewhere. Yeah, he has and no he's one. He's definitely going to come into play. Hopefully, he won't, and they will be soft with us. Another character but- is is tr- is uh, Trish who is Jessica's surrogate sister. Um, so far, her storyline, she's a support system. And I think yeah. that's important. 
she hasn't really had a storyline of her own except for the fact that she's sleeping with uh, uh so what the is his cop name? Who Simpson. Tried to kill her. Simpson. I don't know. I don't right? know his name. The guy. Okay. The, there's a cop who gets who gets mind controlled by Kilgrave, and he comes into the picture, and he wants to try and um, stop him. And because what's interesting is I like the I like his character because it makes a lot of sense. His character, he was a special ops guy. He was a hero, war hero. He's a hero. In his mind, he's a hero. He's always done the right thing. Kilgrave made him do the wrong thing, and now he's, like, obsessively trying to make up for that by yeah. helping Jessica and Trish stop Kilgrave. Then he gets into a romantic relationship with Trish. Because, I mean, you know, that makes yeah, sense. That's what happens. And, um, and so, so far, their storyline is pretty straightforward. Their support system for Jessica, I like. I think it's interesting to get a cop involved in this. Because, I don't know, I didn't expect her to go to any law enforcement. You know what I mean? Get yeah, there. Yeah. I like the cop angle. He has access to resources that she needs, so I think that's useful. Um, and so does Trish. As someone with money, she has access to things that just like get more yeah. resources. So, so I love the way they've set all the pins up. I think they're all useful to her, and they all work not just... On a on a story level, on an emotional level for Jessica, they fulfill emotional. They've needs. also set up this uh, Kilgrave survivor support group that yes. Jessica sort of started. That is just like super interesting and a piece that I assume is set up so that one day Kilgrave can unfortunately ruin all their lives again. Maybe or maybe I don't know. Or maybe they'll all come together. To or stop maybe him they're the key to way. figuring out how he yeah. has his powers. Um, and I, another, this is another thing I love, okay, because we, you know, a lot of the Marvel series so far, Daredevil and, and this show, both have talked about the New York incident, because it obviously is still affecting everybody in New York, what happened affected everyone, it's their 9-11, yes. you know what I mean, so they keep talking about it, because it's so important to them, and I love that in the Marvel Universe, they basically set up the New York incident as their 9-11, I think that's kind of a really cool unifying event, and people immediately identify it. Everyone knows about the Hulk, Captain America, the Avengers. They know about these people. This yeah. is this exists. People with powers are not a surprise. And we love to hear people reference superheroes. Yes, in flippant, disrespectful, in flippant, disrespectful ways. The flag waver. The flag waver. Yeah, like I love it. Like I, it's great. So this is another this support group thing makes me so happy. It's one of those little pieces of writing that I fucking love. How do you live in a world with superheroes? It's why I love Astro City so much. If you don't know Astro City, it's a series by Rob Busiek. Yeah, Kurt Busiek. Kurt Busiek. Thank you, my God, Rob yes. Busiek. I, Kurt Busiek. And it's a great series because so much of it, it focuses on heroes, but it also focuses on everyday people living in a world with heroes. And I love, sh I love series like that. I love shows like that. And so I love this support group is one of my favorite parts of this entire series so far because I want to see where it's going is it just as simple as just having a little bit of extra story to show hey what these people do affects everyday real world people and just like everyday real world tragedy in our lives we have support groups for that you wouldn't why wouldn't you have a superhero support group Captain America stepped on my house the Hulk punched my mom in the face you know what I mean like it's stuff like that it's kind of like what did his mom do to <laughs> piss off the Hulk Jesus Christ <laughs> Eat your vegetables! <laughs> but it's no, but it's true. It's like, w it's great to have these support groups because it's such a real human thing. We would have a support group for shit like this. We would have support groups for like this post if we had a bunch of superheroes topple a building. We would be like, oh my god, Iron, Iron Man's a fucking douchebag. He fucking ruined my apartment. I had to get a refurbished. You know what I mean? Like, I love that. It's so human. It's so real. It's something that The Incredibles played with. The movie, the Pixar Incredibles, played with that idea. Yeah. People getting sued. I love stuff like that. It works so well because it's just like, what would ruin superheroism? Ooh. Us. We would ruin it. Our everyday human lives ruin it. Because what? Because why? Because everyday life isn't a story. Superhero stories, the guy's in the sky, he's heroic, he flies off. The sun goes down. The story's over. But that's not well how life works. No. Life doesn't end. Life keeps going. The fucking building gets destroyed. You don't just walk away and find a new building. You got to build the, the old building back up. And so I like and that. And when you do that, there's construction workers that are like, "Thank God for superheroes." Exactly. You job and so it's kind of like I around. love I love it because it's like it makes the he the heroes feel real. And you know, it's and nothing's wrong with an archetypal hero. Nothing's wrong with the superhero story that has a beginning, middle, and end, and they fly off into the sunset. Nothing is wrong with it. I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. 
cool, but it's so much fun to have heroes in the real world and realize what fucks up with a hero's life. Ev- bureaucracy, everyday <laughs> life, filing paperwork, getting sued for for saving the wrong person and breaking their leg, fucking getting a cat out of a tree. Like, that's the stuff that makes hero stories and, interesting. And ultimately, Jessica Jones plays with the with with you know with great power comes great yeah, responsibility. responsibility and why because if you if you're not you could end up like Kilgrave absolutely like that's fucking scary yeah if you don't like the, the if you don't have like, morality this has that's made who mind you are control, like terrifying the scariest power to Professor make. X is no longer fun for me fuck that motherfucker no but he's not a mind controller he could he could be he what has, do you mean he could be a mind controller. He can, like, limit your brain's capacity he and shit. He can tell you to stop moving. He can tell yeah, you to oh, yeah, do but things. He has even more. Like, so far, Kilgrave just has mind control. Yes. Like, Professor X can look into your thoughts. Yes, but that makes Professor X even soul. worse. Fuck Professor no. X. Shoot all the mind control people but in the face. So I always used to be so into the but idea But he's so of, nice. No, I used to... I know. and But that's the thing. I used to be so into the idea of mind control, but now Kilgrave is so terrifying to me that I'm like, everybody with mind control powers <laughs> has got to go. Put him on... Those are the people on the superhero registry. Those motherfuckers Don't let should be registered. Don't us. <laughs> Those motherfuckers need to be signed up on a piece of this paper. Is, this is why you he started have, the X-Men. You need to have a, a yellow patch with a brain on it, motherfucker, so I know <laughs> that you're gonna fuck with me, man. Don't come near me. This is why he this is why he decided to no, be. No, and that's true. You know, and I think and I think good. and I think that seeing Kilgrave as a villain gives me way more respect for Professor X because he has so much power and he limits himself and is so compassionate and you so know what? ethical. Actually, you know what? I'm coming around. Why? Fuck Professor X. <laughs> Why? Because think about it. Kilgrave has so much power and he's evil. And Professor X has so much power that he that he could use for good. And he's done nothing with yeah, it. Yeah, but Steven. He could use his power. But Steven. He could, okay. and he could cause... He could cause total world okay. peace. Yes, but how? With but his how, will. But how? With but, his but will. Steven, but how would he do that? By taking away other people's free will, and okay. that in our mind. But he could. But he could achieve but Steven, such evil. good with it. He could achieve such. And good now you're with a supervillain. <laughs> and now you're a supervillain. See, Kilgrave. I don't know if he's a supervillain. He's a villain. I don't know if he's a supervillain. Super yeah, you think he's a supervillain? He doesn't have any yes. grand plan. For me, a supervillain is always someone with a grand plan. Like Lex Luthor is a supervillain. He's a grand plan for the universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. you could. Mm, That's my argument. You could make that argument, but the fact that he has superpowers and that he's a villain makes him makes him a supervillain. Okay, fine. We're gonna get that semantic wise. But and, for me, okay, my supervillains always the people that like try to. They're either trying to destroy the entire world because somebody pissed them off, or they're trying to make the entire world under their image because they want to be God or they want to control things and they want to make it better. That's a supervillain, and I and we've always know discussed. What, we don't know what Kilgrave really wants. Like, we're only on episode six. Like, he wants Jessica. That's what he wants thus far, but what is, he, what is his grand else? plan with Jessica? I don't think he like, has Like, what a if grand he wants plan. his own Avengers now? Yeah. What if he thinks, like, maybe. this is my first step to making my own team of Avengers and with but, them I'll but, conquer the but world? But what did he. Do? Maybe, because we don't know what he. First of all, we don't know what was in that box that he. I, that I'm, he made. That box that he made Reva get. Yes, I'm speculating that that has something to do with his origin. Yeah, hopefully. you think? That maybe somewhere on that USB is, is like, his origin how he. Story created Kilgrave. How how he was made. Okay, so we have to find out what Reva was. What what did she do for a living? Because she wasn't just some average citizen if she had some secret shit in a box. I'm wondering if they're gonna tie in, like, everyone's... Like, they're gonna make it clean and make everyone's origins, like, oh, this one scientist was working on these three projects... And they all garnered these well, cause, special individuals. Because Jessica or Jones said she got got her powers by accident. We haven't found out what the accident was. And that's a Marvel but maybe, but maybe Kilgrave, but maybe and Kilgrave and Cage are related because Cage said well, he was I know an that experiment. Cage, yeah, Cage was experiment. The one thing I do know is Luke Cage was experimented on in prison, and uh, and and he the, the the experiment worked and he got unbreakable skin. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but it could be the same scientist or scientific research, whatever. Made Kilgrave. Made Kilgrave. Okay, so yeah, but like, at the end of the day, that's what makes you a supervillain, and that you can't you can't tell Professor X to control everybody's mind. Yes, he'll make world peace, but he'll become a supervillain. 
and it's a deal. Look, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you, Stephen. We already know quite well I would be a supervillain. If I was Professor X, I would have been done made world peace. I would have been done said, all y'all stop fucking fighting right the fuck now. Y'all need to talk about your problems. You can't pick up a gun. All the guns have to be turned into fucking dog bowls. That's it. I'm done. I'm done with y'all. I'm done with y'all. I would already been done it. I would have been a supervillain. I know it. That's why I can't have powers because I would totally use them to control the world for my own image, make everybody stop fighting, and make everyone stop being an idiot. That that's the way I would. But it'll be an okay world. There'll be more comic books, more awesome movies. Okay, you know? but at the same more time, universe. Stephen. But technically, th- I'm just saying it'll be an awesome eth- world. With all ethically, that argument is wrong. That's the wrong argument. We can't take away free will. God gave people, religious people, believe God gave us free will to choose good or evil. If you take that away from people, and, let, let, and let's talk about philosophically, without the, with the absence of God, humanity humanity, humanity is free will. Humanity is will and choice. If you take away people's humanity, you know what I mean? We'll just be what? Be less human. We wouldn't even be animals because animals choose to kill each we'll other or not kill human. each other. We wouldn't even be human. We would be less than human. We'd be less than animals. We would be automatons. If we only had the choice, and, and that sucks, and obviously that's that that's what makes being a human being so fucking. And we're not trying to difficult. alienate our automaton listenership. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, automatons. Um, sorry, red tornado. <laughs> He's an android. He's an android. No, and that's the thing. That's what makes being a human being so so sometimes so shitty because we have to accept that people have the choice to do shitty things, and we just kind of have to hope that we make them stop doing those things. But will it ever truly go away? Because so much of when you do a shitty thing is based off, like, what? An emotional response. You have a bad day at work, you cut someone off. Cutting someone off causes them to swerve, causes an accident. You know what I mean? Shit like that. That wasn't something you were doing out of evil. You just made a shitty choice to cut someone off. Now you cause an accident. That person's neck gets fucked up. They have to fucking go to the hospital. They lose all their money. They lose their job. They start doing drugs. They fucking become a junkie. Their kid has to go to foster care. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, And that's just like everyday life. There's so much life and every day and choice and we try to do the right thing. The goal is to do the right thing and the compassionate thing and to have support. But why do we have to have support? Because sometimes people go through shitty shit and unfortunately as a human being we have to learn to, we don't have to accept it. I don't like to say accept because accept means that we can ever be better. And I absolutely think that humanity can be better. Because if we can choose to do shitty things, we can choose to not do shitty things. And we can choose to be better. And the world is a better place. There is less crime. There is less violence. There's a lot less stuff going on now than there used to be. And people don't believe that, but this statistically, factually, it's true. I hate when people go, the world was such a great place 50 years ago. Okay, really was it? Because the civil rights movement hadn't even gone into place. Black people had really shitty times. Women had really shitty times in our fucking country. So was it a better place? Absolutely not. It was not a better place. Not for me. Not for my friends. Not for my friends of color. Nobody. Um, hello. You know what I'm saying? So that's bullshit. It's like, that. that's not true. So the world is a better place. There's less violence. There's less war. There's less conflict. But yes, there's still war, violence, and conflict because we still have to work. So I don't believe they do that we can't be better. But at the same time, we kind of have to... It's not accept. We have to real be realistic and realize that this isn't just going to happen overnight. That this is we're constantly a work in progress. Humanity is a work in progress. And much and like we Jessica have Jones, fight. we have to, to deal with around. the sins of our past. Yes, and we were not. And the consequences. Still graved in those situations. Yes. All right, so we're at. Uh, I think we're at a good hour podcast for the we first We did an half. hour for. for this is twenty eight minutes, and then the, and the first, first one was like another. Yeah, yeah. Hour. It's a good length. I think we're at a good stopping point to continue on. We're gonna watch the rest of the season, and we'll get back to you and do a part two. And this will be a nice, thick, delicious episode. Catch you in a second, Stephen and Danny of the future. <laughs> And Zena of the future. Zena's eating Steven's face. Ah! Bye. Eat that toy. Good Zena. Good Zena, get it. Get it. Get it, Zena, get it. Get that toy. Get, get it, Steven, toy. get it. Get it, Steven of the past. Now stop it, Steven of the past. Now let's wrap this podcast up. We had originally intended this to be one long episode, but that was just way too long. Yes, it was. So, you get the first part of our Jessica Jones talk. And then you'll get Part next week spoiler filled Jessica Jones the first one was talking. Too.
Yeah, but it was like six episodes in, spoiler filled. Yeah. Now they're going to get the full 13 episode. We're going to have to wait till next kaboom. week. We can do it for like Wednesday or something. Before Thanksgiving? Drop before it Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. before Thanksgiving. You heard that? You're going to get to eat your mashed potatoes with a side of the Vundacast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, keep us away from the cranberry sauce. We're allergic to cranberry sauce. Uh, please tweet us at Vundablog or at Vundacast if you enjoyed it. Let us know what your Jessica Jones watching experience was like because for us, it was very emotional and uh, heart wrenching. Let's like, just say we had a list full of things we wanted to accomplish this weekend, and because of Jessica Jones, we have now reserved it for the last six hours mm-hmm. before we have to go to bed to go to work in the morning. Mm-hmm. So, because we literally just did nothing but watch Jessica Jones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And sleep. And sleep. And eat. Yes. We weren't on some Kilgrave nonstop, um, like, command. We didn't piss in the bed. No, we didn't. Uh, So, on that note, (laughs) (laughs) the note that we didn't piss in the bed, uh, thank you for listening to us on the Radioactive Underground Radiate. I have been Steven. And I have been DL. And remember, kids. Sorry for yawning. Remember, kids, when you're binge watching a TV show, it is very important to um, take the time to shower and bathe and keep up proper hygiene. Yeah. Because that's exactly what we did. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wunder. Hey, Wunder. Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. You're listening to the Voonda Cost. What's up, everybody? This is JC David Frank, Green Ranger. You're listening to Voonda Cast. Oh, God. to the Vondacast.